So for any linear function, linear functions look like lines, the average rate of change over any length input value interval is constant. That's a fact about linear equations. We're going to highlight the word constant. Because again, for linears, it does not matter what distance I put in my interval between 1 and 2, between 1 and 3, between 1 and 5. The average rate of change is the same at all times. This is the definition of a slope. Linear equations are the only ones that have constant slope, which is why before now, you probably said the only graphs that have a slope are linear. They're the only graphs that technically have a constant slope. And again, that slope is the same over any interval. So like, let's say I was looking from 1 to 2. That has the same slope if I was looking from 1 to 3 or from 1 to 4 because it's a constant slope the whole time. However, not all graphs have that attribute. In fact, no other graphs have that attribute. So we're going to explore what that means for us and maybe some ways that we've seen before. We're going to practice doing the average rate of change formula over and over again. So the table below gives the selected values for the function of f of x. We're going to explain why f of x is not a linear function. Now, most of us, when we've done this before, have done this number, where you just check to see the changes in the y's, and you check to see if it's constant. So my question to you is, I'm telling you this is not linear, but I got all the same numbers when I checked that pattern. Why is this not linear, though? The X, look at the X's. Are the X's changing at a constant number? No, so we actually can't use this trick that you've probably done for forever with tables to see if it's constant or see if it's one of the other types of functions. And really what you've been doing when you've done this is a very, very simplified version of what we're going to do. Don't erase what you just did. I'm going to uh, scoot over to the side and use a different color. So if you want to switch colors, you can. What we're going to do is we're going to find the average rate of change in every single interval, meaning between set, uh, 1 and 2. My inputs are 1 and 2. The outputs are 7 and 4. 7 minus 4 is 3. 2 minus 1 is 1. So that rate of change is 3. Check. Between the next intervals from 4 to 2, I'm just scooting down a pair, the outputs would be 10 and 7. 10 minus 7 is still 3, but 4 minus 2 is 2. That's 1.5. That's not the same slope. The next one, between 8 and 4, that would be 13 minus 10. Do you all see what I'm doing with the average rate of change formula each time? The difference in the y's on top, the difference in the x's on bottom. This is still going to be 3 on top, but now we have a 4 on bottom. That's 1.25. Uh, no, wait. That's 0.75. I can do math. So these are not consistent rates of change. So because the rates of changes, these numbers right here, here, and here, we know that this is not a linear function. So that's what we're going to write in words. There's going to be a lot of explanation and reasoning today. So why is it not a linear function? We would say f of x is not a linear function. Oh, look, a complete sentence. because the inputs and outputs do not change by a constant rate. That's the definition of a linear equation, that all of the inputs and outputs, every interval you choose, has the same slope. We don't have the same slope every time, so we know it is not linear. So another thing you could think to yourself, this is not maybe the sentence we would write down, but this would be helpful to know. The a rock for this f of x is not constant. That's not how you spell constant. There it is. The average rate of change is not constant in this graph, so it's not linear. Does that make sense? Okay. Example two says to consider the quadratic function g of x equal to x squared. So I'm telling you this time it's quadratic. 
Complete the table values for g of x over the consecutive equal length input value intervals, and then complete the table for the average rates of change. So, okay, literally the first thing we need to do is use this function to fill in the chart. We should be able to do this one in our head. What is negative 3 squared? 9. What is negative 1 squared? What is 1 squared? What is 3 squared? And what is 5 squared? If we didn't know that off the top of our head, we would be plugging those numbers into the formula, getting it out. Or maybe if it was more complicated than just x squared. But this is like the parent function for quadratics. It's like the most basic quadratic parabola we can have. Let's complete the tables to show the intervals between these two values. So the first one we're going to do is between negative 3 and 1. So here's negative 3, here's negative 1. To show my work, I'm going to zoom in so my pen gets thinner. To show my work, the average rate of change is the, I'll color code, second x minus the first x on the bottom, and the y's that go with those numbers on the top. That's what I was doing in the table above, okay, just showing my work in a different way. Um, what is that average rate of change? What is 1 minus 9? Negative 8. What is negative 1 plus 3? Two. So negative 8 divided by 2, negative 4. So my average rate of change for that interval between negative 3 and 1 is negative 4. It would be a downward tangent slope. If we do the second interval, this time we're checking the interval from, one, from negative 1 to 1. So again, I just refer to my table. I know 1 is going to be my first number, and negative 1 is my second x value which means my first y value is 1, and the other y value is also 1. What's 1 minus 1? What's 0 divided by 2? 0. 0 on top is OK. 0 on bottom is not OK. Do you all see what I'm doing here? Can you all fill out the rest of the table for me, please? Okay, as we get our table filled out from finding all the rates of changes between these intervals, so between negative 3 and negative 1, between negative 1 and, neg and 1, between 1 and 3, and 3 and 5, we can find a pattern here. What's happening to the slopes or the average rates of change every time we go down this table? These average rates of change are changing at a constant rate, right? So this would be plus 4, this would be plus 4, this would be plus 4. My rates of changes are changing at a constant rate. My rates of changes are changing at a constant rate. When that happens, when my rates of change are changing at a constant rate, that's a quadratic. That's the definition of a rate of change for quadratic. So what do we notice about the average rates of changes of this function over equal length intervals? We notice that the average rate of change of g of x change, specifically increase, we'll write that down because that's going to be helpful later, at a constant rate. Further, since the average rates of change change at a constant rate, so many words here, therefore, the rates of changes of g of x are given by a linear function. And now this is pretty confusing because how many times have I said the words rate of change, change, and constant in this sentence? I get it. Let me go over it one more time. On the back here, I've got a whole bunch of tables set up for you, and that's really what we're going to be doing today, seeing if we can use a table without graphing it to identify if it's linear, quadratic, or something else. So we'll do these three together so you can kind of see what I'm wanting. They're, these are exactly like the questions you're going to have on your homework assignment. So we want to figure out the rates of changes between all of these intervals. So the, for this first interval, and maybe I'll do this. So in between these two numbers, I'm going to use red. If I was finding the average rate of change here, it would be 
2 minus 1 over 1 minus 0. So the output over the inputs. Well, 2 minus 1 over, well, whoa, I just said all the wrong words. 1 minus 0 over 2 minus 1, what is that equal to? 1. Okay, great. Let's go for the next interval. So between these two, this would be 3 minus 2 on bottom and 4 minus 1 on top because my outputs go on top, my inputs go on bottom. And I'm just doing bigger minus smaller so that I can do the math easy in my head. 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. Whoa, did I write the wrong number down? Oh, well, we'll keep going. This is 3, correct? Here, we have 4 minus 3 over 9 minus 4. 9 minus 4 is 5. 4 minus 3 is 1, so that's equal to 5. So what's happening with these slopes every time? They're increasing by 2. So my slopes are increasing by a constant rate, which means that this is probably quadratic. We can shorten it to quad for right now because that's I didn't leave enough space for the whole word quadratic. This is probably quadratic, making a parabola, because the average rates of change change at a constant rate, plus 2. So it's increasing at a constant rate, which means that it is quadratic, most likely. Do y'all see how this works? Can you get me the average rates of change for the other two tables? Try to interpret it for yourself, but we'll go back and we'll make sure we can interpret it together. So B and C are yours. Is this what we got for our numbers? Yes. Cool. So that first one, our table B, what's happening with the rates of changes? They stay the same. We're going to use the word constant. They are constant. When the rates of changes are constant, that is the straight-up definition of a linear function. So that first, or the middle one, since the rates of changes are the same over any interval, that's linear because the average rate of change is constant. It's always increasing by 1. Okay, for the next one, would we be able to call this one uh, quadratic, linear, or neither? Quadratic. How are these rates of change changing? Every Whoa, what word am I trying to write down? They're, they're changing by subtracting 0.5 or subtracting a half every time. What is happening with my writing? Okay. So because the average rates of change change at a constant rate, it's quadratic. And this time it's negative 1 half or negative 0.5. If those numbers didn't have a pattern that you could add or subtract, you would say neither because the average rates of change does not change at a constant rate. That would be your explanation here. Now, finding these average rates of changes tells us more also about concavity, which was those concave up, concave down intervals. So not only when we find this can we decide if maybe it's quadratic, linear, or neither, we can also decide if it's in uh, concave up or concave down. Here's what I mean. For concave up, the average rate of change over equal length input value intervals is increasing. And things are concave down when the average rate of change over equal length input value intervals is decreasing. So if we just did a quick check up at what we did up here, that first table, because the constant or the average rate of change changes by plus two, it's increasing. So is that one concave up or concave down? Concave up because the average rate of change is increasing. What about the third one? What about the middle one? Neither. Linear equations don't have concavity because they're straight lines. Okay, so we can do the same exact thing that we
we did on A, B, and C at the top with these tables down here at the bottom with a different explanation. So I'll do the first one and we'll, you'll do B and C kind of like we did up above. So again, we are just finding the average rate of change on these intervals. So we are figuring out for this one, we're gonna do one minus four over 1.1 minus one. This one might require just a smidgen bit more uh, arithmetic on your part because this is negative three over 0.1, which is like saying negative three times 10 because dividing by a decimal is like multiplying by its reciprocal. So that's actually negative 30. This would be negative one minus one over 1.2 minus 1.1, which is negative two over 0.1 which is negative 20. Oh, I didn't highlight. And for the third equal length interval, we'd have negative two minus negative one over 1 1.3 minus 1 1.2, which is negative one over 0 0.1, which is equal to negative 10. So what's happening with my rates of changes here? It's going up by 10 each time. So this graph could probably be concave up because the average rate of change is increasing. Not even really worried about here if it's increasing at a constant rate. If the numbers are increasing, it's concave up because cubic functions and higher order polynomials can still have concavity and not necessarily be a quadratic. So if I'm asking you about concavity, I don't care about the pattern of how it's changing just so long as it's increasing or decreasing. Can y'all do B and C for me? Yeah, you got it. Same idea. Are these the numbers you got for your rates of changes? Okay, what do we notice about B? It's constant. It's constant. All of the rates of change are the same number, which means what kind of graph is this? Neither, it is neither concave up or concave down because the average rate of change is constant. If the average rate of change is constant, does that mean it's linear or quadratic? Linear, okay. Now the other one, what's happening to my rates of changes every time? Decreasing. They're decreasing, so is this concave up or concave down? Concave. concave down because the average rate of change is decreasing. So providing a reason is going to be really important when we get ready to prep for the AP exam because your free response questions can be as easy as this, but you won't get the points unless you add the reason. So know, knowing these words about concavity, increasing, decreasing, all those rate words, that's why we're starting with that so we can work it into like almost everything we do. Every time we learn a new function, we'll talk about concavity. Are there any questions about like determining if it's linear, quadratic, or neither, and then it's concavity based on rate of change. We feeling okay? Okay, fabulous.